Last year when I was in Oklahoma for a legit kids retreat there, Mike Odell stopped by the retreat one evening and uh, had a really nice long conversation with us and answered some good questions. So I ended up hitting record um, pretty much right at the beginning because I knew that it would be um, a lot of fun. So this is that recording. It was on my phone. It was um, as my battery was dying. And so the quality is not um, ideal, but I think there's some really good information. He um, is a lot of fun to listen to and he talks how he got started with quilting and with legit kits and answers a lot of questions. So I wanted to share it. It's taken me this long to um, compile and edit and just remember <laughs> to post it, but it was a really good interview um, with a good group of people. I will actually be back in Oklahoma for another retreat, so I'll post the link to that in the comments, and I hope you enjoy it. I have also posted in the comments the list of questions that he answers, so if you want to skip ahead, you're welcome to, but I hope you enjoy this. I'm a pediatric certified registered nurse anesthetist. I was doing CPR on a six-month-old yesterday, wow. and I've been in healthcare since 1995, and I'm just ready to change. Um, I'm ready to do my thing, and I've found it, and I'm also about to turn 50, and if this is going to be my midlife crisis, it's a pretty good one to have. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's a lot. Um, I've got three kids, two are in grade school, one is about to be a freshman in high school. Um, our life is really, really busy, um, and, you know, I, I couldn't do this without her. Um, my wife has been very supportive. When she got into quilting, I had been dragging her to like glass blowing classes and cake decorating. And I do wood carving and all that crap. And so she was just like, I'm going to start quilting. I want you to leave alone. I was like, okay, whatever. Because I thought about quilts like most guys, I think, think about quilts. I mean, they're all right, but it's not really nothing. But then she took me to, to a show and I saw some of the art quilts and uh, I started getting ideas. And I just kept going with some stuff. Did a couple of books of quilts after I left quilting alone for a year or two for her. And then um, then I saw this really neat Stormtrooper design online and I wanted to make it for me and my kids. And uh, so that was how I drew the first pattern. Um, and so I came at quilt pattern design from the outside. I wasn't skilled. I didn't have that background knowledge. And I think that really helped in writing the patterns because at it as somebody who I just wanted to put all those cool colors together and make it easy for me to sew it. And so doing foundation paper pieces and blocks just made sense to me. Did you know foundation paper piecing before? Like did you have a concept or I understood the concept. Um, I did uh, my first quilt was a Darth Vader head for my little kid and it was a pixel quilt. So it was it was twelve hundred and sixty yeah. pixels. I sewed together. Wow. Um, I didn't use interfacing. I just sewed them all together. It's not that great because it's not the most cool thing. I mean, it looks pretty neat from a distance, but you get up close and there's a lot of layers on it. Um, but I did his, I wanted to do his TIE fighter on the back. And when I said, I want to do like those angled things and stuff, and it's like, I wonder how I could do that. My wife's like, that sounds like foundation paper piece. So I Googled it, uh, found a little, you know, how to thing. I, so I spent like five minutes studying that. Like, okay, I could do that. And then to real on craft paper. And that was my first pattern. It's like a little tie fighter like this. Um, and then that's when I was looking for the next thing to do, the next Star Wars thing for my oldest. Mm -hmm. And I found that Stormtrooper. And I was trying to figure out how would I do all those seams I don't understand. And then <coughs> made it up either. from there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I, the first one I did, I, I, I don't, I was computer savvy back in the day, but I haven't been keeping up with technology, so uh, I didn't write the first pattern on the computer, I just drew it on my dining room floor, looking at the scale. So I got a big paper from Amazon, I taped it to the dining room floor, and then had plotted all the points for that Stormtrooper, I don't know if you guys have seen any of that, but... Um, I, I, I drew that at full scale, and then I needed to make copies of it because I knew I was going to mess it up. Plus, I was like, you know, little is easier to work with than big, you know, bite at a time. And so I cut it into pages that would fit on my scanner and scanned it in that way so I could back it in the pattern. And, 
you know, as I was thinking about doing this, I, I like teaching people, I like helping people. And so the whole time I was doing this, I was like, man, this is hard. You know, how many people actually want to go through all this effort to, what, how many quilters are going to spend 18 months writing their pattern and finding all these colors and doing all that? Because I spent countless hours on that first pattern. Well, the whole while I was thinking, how do I make this where somebody else can do it, which is incredibly hard. Um, and I like that. So, uh, you know, it, it took me a year and a half to write that first pattern. I wasn't doing it constantly, but I was thinking about it a lot. And, and I came up with a lot of the ideas that we're still using today. So, did that. Um, I also am a real estate investor out here, and I met a serial entrepreneur through that. He coached me on how to launch a company hire people, all that, so the right people to start out with, and uh, so, you know, despite having a really busy life, I was able to launch this company, and I have a lot of help. Um, about, about what year was that? I started writing that pattern in 2018, I launched Digit Kits in 2020, and um, in January 2020, so this is going to be a good year. When <laughs> <laughs> COVID hit, then I got COVID, and then I missed nine weeks of work uh i wasn't even sure i was going to be able to work again you know kind of in the middle of that i was sick um but you know we struggled through that and then uh met jamie not too long into it on the internet um and just i just started asking quilters what they wanted you know on, on instagram and facebook and i got feedback and sent it through testing and, you know the first few designs were a bit rough um, what was the first design? So the first one was that Stormtrooper, the second was a uh, Boba Fett design with 125 colors and it looks amazing. What's what? A Boba, Boba Fett, Fett. The, the bounty hunter from okay. Star Wars, the okay. one that they've done okay. Mandalorian okay. from. Um, and then I talked to an intellectual property attorney uh, who said, you've got to stop doing Disney. <laughs> so I found another intellectual property attorney and he was like, got to stop doing this <laughs> right. um, because they can sue you into oblivion yeah, even if it's just part of your company you know right. uh, and even if you give it away for free they can sue you into oblivion uh, there's been the tap of four where they like took out a bunch of people on etsy you know since cease and desist i don't know if they sued them but also i've learned a lot about copyright like copyright law here. so then our first pattern after that was the fox so I found stuff I could get the, the rights to. Um, and even though we're making derivatives of the artwork, uh, I use a lot of real photos just to get all that shading and, and highlighting and stuff in there. Uh, so, so we use source images that um, I can get the rights to. Uh, and then I do file copyrights on the patterns because uh, there's a lot of energy that goes into these things. There's not an actual computer program that writes these patterns. It's not like you can put it in a EQ or whatever. Um, it's, it's still hand drawn. This is hand drawn by graphic artists now. So I've got a graphic art team, uh, and I work with them, uh, different people with different specialties, and that's why we're able to come up with this really well composed stuff. So um, I feel like I have an artist's eye, but I don't. I direct it. Um, I don't write the patterns. I direct it. I I I, I give artists work. Um, and I paid them well for it. Um, so it's it's that team approach that allows us to create stuff that I don't really feel like there's much to compare to out there. So, um, you know, we've got Legit Kids pays 20 people now. Um, we're, we're going really steady, too. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty crazy. I, I can't believe it's only been three years. Yeah. Because I bought this caribou kit. Who knows? It must have been within three years. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know if I met. I must have met it online. Um, it seems like I saw something about Boba Fett one time, but maybe I don't know. Uh, I just saw it and was in, in trance. I need a knife. <laughs> I want to do a knife. Oh, okay. I want to do a knife. Yeah, well, they got a dragon already. He needs a. He needs a friend. He needs a friend. Like my so first, well. our first ever tester, and I had to pay money to get people to test at first. Like I had to pay for ads, and and I mean people didn't think it was possible. Um, and then you know it just I had like eight Instagram followers. 
you know, so. <laughs> but uh, Kelsey made this for her boyfriend, and I was called Quilting Space Studio back then because I want to do the double entendre of the space, you know, and, and we save space because the, the, the patterns are just, you know, they're yeah. small and the whole project can fit in a notebook folder. Because so I had to do that because I was... So Kelsey's boyfriend saw this because she made it for him and he said, Babe, that quilt is legit. <laughs> and I don't use that word that right. much. I mean, you know, I can yeah, like MC Hammer, but I don't use it in, you know, in, in regular speech like the, like the young kids do now. <laughs> uh, but, but, um, I just thought it was a fun name and, or just a fun thing to say. And then we were thinking about legit quilt kits, but that's kind of hard to say. And, you know, I feel like the easiest way to do these is to buy the kit. And that's kind of what, that's how I geared it was for the quilt kits, you know. Um, so we, I just called it Legit Kits. And I trademarked the name. And, and it worked. Um, and it's a really rudimentary pattern compared to what we have now. Um, and it's actually flipped backwards. Like a couple of our, our, our first few, because it's a mirror image. And so we did the mirror image. And so actually he's holding the gun in his own hand in the finished quilt. <laughs> Just flip um, the photo. <clears throat> yeah. But if you're a purist, it's a big deal. <laughs> um, so, so then we then we did the fox, then we did the giraffe, um, and then the lion, and then the dog. It was like, oh, the fox. I just kept going from there. I just do stuff I think is cool. Uh, I throw away way more art than I let go through. Because um, if it doesn't, if it doesn't hit me in the chest, I just want to do it. Um, do you have a favorite out of everything that's been released so far? You know, they're all kind of my babies. <laughs> I just kind of love them all. I don't, I'm not trying to be that way to be like uh, non-committal, but like mm -hmm. each sense. one of them has got a little story, and I, I probably should write that little story and put it in with them. Oh, that's it's kind of hard to yeah. have. Yeah, I need to do that. It's just kind of What's hard. What's the story behind a care board? Are you a hunter? I'm not a hunter, but I appreciate large wildlife, um, and I wasn't trying to knock Frozen off, but, you know, we watch a lot of it in my house. Look at a little girl. <laughs> and so, um, you know, those colors may kind of reflect some Disney stuff in there, but I just, I just love that picture. I was actually looking for a moose. Like a bull moose. Um, Who was I, it that said they wanted a moose? Mandy. Yeah, Mandy yeah. Today. And I still get asked for a moose all the time. And I still. What happens is I get, I get a vision of what I want it to be before, before it happens. Um, so I, when you when you say something to me, I get a vision of what what I want, and so then I I find a photograph that is closest to what I want done and then I send then I then I go through with our team over and over again until we either find that vision or we find out that it's going to take too much detail to do because you know some of these quote well, like that the monarch is a major project I'm not sure he's taking that on but props oh, to you um hey, uh, uh, oh it's Dana, Dana. Yeah, she's you know it's on. doable but you know it's she's I feel like it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of pushing the limit of how much detail I feel like the average person is going to want to take on the average paper. I'm, I'm working on it after I finish my homework, but I think in my head that when I'm done with the monarch, I'm done with my quilting career. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of my life. It is so. it is beautiful when it's done. Yeah, yeah. And is that the one Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it is gorgeous. It's a whole lot, but like that's finding that balance between catching all the shading, catching all the detail, and, and having that good composition, and having a balance of where the focus. You know, we all if if it has eyes, we put a ton of detail in the eyes <laughs> because <laughs> because that's what sucks people in because that's the first place that a person looks at something if it's got an eye in it. You're going mind. straight to it. That's what I'm working on right now is the caribou eye. Yeah. It's the hardest walk in my whole quilt. Yeah, it is. And so I wanted to be here to do that. Yeah, and I wanted the antlers to pop 
and I wanted it to be so big that the antlers are actually going off of it. Yeah. You can't catch it. It's so big. Uh, and I, I want to do a longhorn um, yeah. cow as well. And, and I want, one of those. I want to have like... 16. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be the horizontal yeah, like the yeah, yeah, like yeah. the fire oh, plane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I want so I want one of those horns to be taken up, mm -hmm. you know, like going over the animal. But then the other one, you only see about half of it because it's too big. Of one. You know, yeah. and I see that as something yeah. cool to go behind a couch or something. Yeah. So you know, it's just every one of these designs and stuff that I've thought was awesome. And I was, you know, like I said, I've thrown away. I probably only let about a third of the art go through into a quilt pattern that we start with. And often that's after. A dozen revisions. Oh, uh, so we. That's hard. Yeah, it is. Um, what were some of the recaps? We yeah. probably don't wish that. We don't pay for them. Uh, <laughs> there's a duck that that looked cool. Oh, that, the the apes, the monkeys. Yeah, monkeys. They're they're in the WPAP format, like the the um the, the sea turtle. It's got those crazy colors in it. It's a it's a chimp with a baby on its back. Just just never got where I wanted it to be. So Jamie, what was the first one you started uh, testing for me? I tested a little coffee, and um, yeah, so then would have been Mo. In the fall of twenty twenty. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And then Mo, and then I did the flower trio. And about the time I did the flower trio, I thought, and how do I make sure I do the rest of them too? <laughs> so exactly. I, I horned my way in. You did good. <laughs> my goal is 100 designs. And we're working on number 50 right now. That's so the part I'm working on right now <laughs> oh, no. is an eye. And I mean, like I said, I just do stuff that I think is cool. I don't know how popular it's going to be. It's always a gamble. I don't yeah. I don't know if people are going to want to do this or not. But, Papers. you know, it's going to be... Wow. Yeah. See by eighty, you know, like really zoomed in, so it'll be something that you can't really see it up close. Yeah. But when you step back, it's gonna look like a really cool eyeball. We're still working on the the reflection in the in the pupil mm -hmm. um, to make to, to show the lens underneath it. So um, I'm, nice I'm messaging back and forth about that. I was doing that today. That's cool. We well, got the reflection on muscle like down. Yeah, yeah. That was every time I look at that quilt, it's like. That's really shiny. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. It looks like that car sitting in front of you. It's yeah. Really awesome. To me, there's a few things that, that I consider to be art, um, and one of them is making something do what it shouldn't be able to do. You know, these are all flat, mm -hmm. solid fabrics. They should not be able to be a three dimensional right. object. And so when we pull that off, that's great. You know, and I also look for. Um, my main focus on all these designs is composition. It's got to have good composition. It's got to take, it's got to pull the viewer in, and then there's ways that your eyes kind of go around an image, and then there's parts of it that pull you back in. So like all the angles on the little copy are on purpose. Um, and I went through hundreds of pictures of coffee being poured, poured into a cup until I got like one. And then we still adjusted it somewhat to make it what it is. And I feel like that's what makes us stand out it's because most pattern designers are, are quilters first. They have skill, um, but they're not necessarily uh, yeah, capital A artists. So I feel like that's what we bring to it that's different than the actual art. And that's why I stalked you for a really long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, our, uh, Jamie's first impression of Legit Kids Headquarters is that it's small. Um, and it's not. What? That's what I heard. That's what came back to you? Here. Yeah. It's what? It's small. It's small. It's not a huge building. Um, it's oh, actually, oh, it was a chiropractor's office. Uh, so it was, office it's, itself. yeah, it's two 875 square foot buildings put together um, with a garage in the middle because Kaufman was just like, we need to shift from pallets and fabric, so we need to have a place we can drop those in. How did you get any stuff like that? Uh, that was the first fabric I saw. And when they saw that they had 365 colors, mm -hmm. I was sold. Um, as a computer guy in the 80s, uh, my little brother and I saved our allowance up and upgraded our computer. Um, and so we started out with a four color computer, a CGA computer, two of these colors were black and white. 
And then, and then we got an EGA graphics card which had 16 colors on it. And most quilt kits come with 16 colors on them. And then, and then we compiled our allowance together and it changed our world when we went to a VGA card which had 256. So one of those things I've done is I've taken usual quilt pattern from 16 colors to 365 counter. Um, I chose solid fabrics because I found my first ventures in the foundation paper piecing frustrating because I wasn't getting my triangles on right and I like solid colors because they're dyed through and I also like it because they're well saturated and this is going to look like this every time if you use Kona whereas if you're using a batik or a print the prints you've got side issues you've got direction issues and prints are also really personal you know some people I I love the fact that these are solid because I first tried foundation paper piecing with just a printed fabric. It was a rooster with feathers. Mm -hmm. And the flipping and everything was so hard. Mm -hmm. um, it, well, I was just trying it at home years and years ago. But then I did a Judy Nehemiah thing, which is, it was also printed fabric. I didn't do the fatigue. And it was difficult. And this has been so much easier because it's the solids and you don't have to worry about that. Yeah, it's died through. Yeah. And I, I got in some arguments online. I got in a lot of arguments online. Don't tell me I'm stopping the um, <laughs> People were arguing about the right side of the Kona solid fabric. And Kona itself on its website says there is no right side. Um, and we pay no attention to how it comes off the bolt versus how people get it with their sticker marks. It happens if you're wrong side up anyway when you get it. Um, mm -hmm. Because you really can't tell. And when you wash it, it doesn't matter because it is dyed on. So uh, that, that made it an easy decision. Um, and you know, I had a moment when I was about 30 years old and I wanted to be Braveheart for Halloween and I couldn't find the proper kilt. And so I just went to a store and I bought a sewing machine, my first sewing machine for 60 bucks. And I bought the tartan that matched Bravehearts and I was like, I'll just make a kilt. Um, and I did it. Still have it. Uh, made it out of felt. That was possibly a mistake. It some felt. But um, it took a lot of starch and a lot of ironing. Uh, but I, I taught myself to sew with that. I, you know, it was a Chinese made sewing machine and it had a line drawing of the sewing machine with a line drawing of where the thread went. And it was impossible to even tell which was what, but I still figured it out. And on day two of my sewing experience, when I was about to pull my hair out, my now wife came over to my apartment and said, what does this thing you do? And she flipped the presser foot down and that changed everything. <laughs> 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 well, how did my grandma do this? It's so hard. You know? So, you know, after that, it was game on. Um, presser foot is really important. Um, she married, and he married her too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but still, I told her how, I taught her how to do sewing machine. But when I was there with that sewing machine in my in my cart, I saw the fabric in a different light that time. I mean, it's not like Legit Kits was born then, 19 years ago when I was 30. <laughs> so, you know, that kind of stayed with me. And so when I started doing those quilt patterns, I was like, that feeling was still there. That I want to do it with all the colors. And I've gotten, I've gotten a lot of pressure from people uh, about incorporating different brands. I like art gallery, and it does. It feels like butter. You got some of it, but it costs twice as much. Oh, our stuff's already expensive, and they only have seventy-five colors. I can't even get started with seventy-five colors. There right. you go. So yeah, I'm I'm just sticking with Kona. Uh, it's not because they didn't anything special for us. Now they they are working with us, and it was really cool to go to their headquarters in December or January. Road to California. I made an appointment to go there. And uh, we went in a little conference room. I started pulling quilts out. People were just like, oh my God. So they started bringing more people in, you know, and then they brought the CEO in. Oh, wow. Then he gave him Sculliver. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sculliver is hanging outside Ken Kaufman's oh, office no, that's at so Kona. Cool. Yeah. See, I mean, uh, I too. <laughs> yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, they, they told me before I met him, they're just like, he is a big, he's big time into art. He just loves art of all kinds, it's just it's his hobby. And so when he came in and he started looking at my stuff, he was just like, our stuff. He was like, um, you know, there's some other people out there doing this stuff. 
I've not seen it. You're no, making, there's, there's you're a, making you, art here. Yeah, and I like that distinction uh, between, I looked this up, the distinction between art and craft is, you know, they're, they're lumped together, arts and crafts, and, you know, rightfully so. Both require skill to execute. You have to have skill to make a craft. You have to have skill to make art. But the difference between those two things is art creates an emotional response in the viewer. Whereas craft tends to get a, oh, that's cute, you know? Um, so there is nothing like popping a legit kid's cool open in front of a bunch of people who aren't expecting it. Especially me, you know? Just a straight guy who works in the hospital. When I brought, when I started bringing my quilts up, you know, I was like, oh, hey, I made a quilt. And people was like, you're whatever. And, you know, and, <laughs> like, oh, my God. <laughs> That's fun. That never gets old. I mean, now they know what I'm there. Uh, when, I, when I went to um, Journey Quilts in Oklahoma City, the owner of that company knew that she'd seen some of my stuff before. So I went in there, and um, I had a box full of quilt tops. And uh, when I walked in, I didn't recognize her, but she recognized me because I'd been to a quilt guild meeting last year. She's brand new. And Trish leaned back and shouted back to the production area. She's like, everybody, stop what you're doing and come in here. I don't know what he's going to pull out of that box, but I'm telling you, it's it's going to be awesome. And so that was cool. Because she was like, wait a minute, you're, you're, you're. Like, yeah, yeah, I knew it was you. And so, yeah, and so then I, and then I pulled him out and, and it was a cool moment because I was showing Austin how we look at this stuff that people are just happen to suck air. This is great. When Jamie said we get to go to your place tomorrow, I was like, oh, that beats Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to build this company to be something that the people work at as their career. Um, doing that, making that leap to being an actual employer and having people depend on their income for their life uh, had a bigger impact on me than I thought it would. Um, I've been a manager lots of times, but I've never been the boss before. Um, I'm, you know, I don't have a business degree or a business background. I, I just feel like treating people right and doing the right thing every time. You know, when we have a pattern that's not working, I we go back to the drawing board. I don't go ahead and push it through. You know, um, and it makes some people mad, but I'd rather them be mad because I'm doing the right thing than mad because I did the wrong thing. Um, we're just a little shop in Oklahoma City. Uh, you know, I was excited when I found out y'all were Oklahoma because I had found you before. I knew that, and I can't remember exactly how I found it. But it's like, actually yeah, a great know. location because shipping—we're in the middle of the country. You know, it's about yeah. the same distance everywhere. It's the same thing for quilt shows. You know, some are pretty far away. Right now, our truck's in Salt Lake City. I wish we had the truck here. I'd have driven the truck here if it was in town. That would have been. Haunt, would the, be cool. haunt the airports. We got those working a couple of weeks ago. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, the, quilt, the truck's in Salt Lake, and then it's going to Denver, and then coming back here. It's been a crazy, wonderful, scary, fun, colorful adventure so far. And it's just been super cool. You created a lot of addicts. <laughs> I warned you on the fact. Right, you did. <laughs> that you did. And so I'm it's gonna write a book about legit incredible. kids too, and it's not finished yet. And that's pretty fun, you know. I'm kind of living the story, and I just jot some notes on my phone every once in a while. Pretty awesome. I just need more time to quit my job. <laughs> <laughs> but it makes a lot of money. And it feeds my family, so that's inconvenient. <laughs> So, I mean, Legit Kids is kind of like how I had to go through life, you know, it's, it's a lot of work for something that's worth it in the end. I hope that everybody goes out and mm -hmm. oh, yeah. that's, that's what this company is to One of the things we've got is we're starting to sell little scrap bags. We don't really waste that much off our bolts. We, since all of our cuts are square and they're all, they're all made to like maximize that bolt. Um, so, you know, in those scrap fabric fragments and scraps, they're all, if you line them all up, it's a, it's a bolt. But some people might use that extra fabric and make dresses out of it, you know? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's a thought. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't wait to see the cutting machine do its thing. Yeah, yeah, I won't let you guys all play with it too long. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> you just tap a couple of buttons on the screen and it'll cut. Five, 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 five,
It just it just does cross bolt cuts and so we use that machine to cut out like like the yards and stuff you know to unroll the bolt and and measure it out and then cut that takes time uh, and so that machine helps us do those bigger cuts first so that then we take them and cut them into the smaller pieces with a rotary cutter power rotary cutter we put lasers on the wall um, so we got we got the we've got the robot machine, right? The the, the fabric cutting machine, and we got lasers. So now it's time for bolt on bolts. We got the robots and the lasers. <laughs> <laughs> so we got lasers mounted on the ceiling, and then those are over cutting boards. And so the laser shines on the fabric, and the cutting board has hash lines on it for the different cuts that we use. So you just center your fabric on there, and then scoop the the rotary cutter under it, it's completely effortless because it's got little rollers underneath that shoe. It seems it just goes right through it, you just follow the laser. Wow. And then you stack it up and turn it or whatever to do your next cut. Wow. I had to draw out how to make each cut, so that's pasted them on the wall. Um, <clears throat> so you've grown well. Yeah. And the, the cutting tables are height adjustable, motorized, because I work in an operating room, you know, <laughs> raise the table over the table. Uh, but you know, I don't. Tilt I want to. Right, tilt to the left. We don't have the tilt. Uh, but yeah, um, I I don't want. You know, it's a repetitive job. You know, so we got pads on the floor. I don't want people getting injured from on the job with this stuff. So I try and. I've, I've been some places where you're cutting fabric and there it's a fixed height for the table, and not everybody's the same height. So these are you're raising the lumber and um, and I built those. Um, you build a lot of things. Your mind is just amazing to me. Like the whole quilt rack that you have in the booth. Yeah, the quilt Yeah. yeah. That's in the car. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I'm a chronic tinkerer. I'm having to buy the lasagna now. Yeah. <laughs>